Angola is the name given to kings in Kumbundu language, one of more than 60 languages which can be heard in present-day Angola. Located in the western part of southern Africa, its 5,000 kilometers of land border share frontiers with Congo-Brazzaville, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Zambia and Namibia. Following five centuries of Portuguese colonization, Angola became an independent country in 1975 and has retained Portuguese as its official language. The country currently has more than 13 million inhabitants, a very small population if we consider that its area is 1,270,000 square kilometers, twice the size of France. From Cabinda to Kuleni, Angola's 18 provinces offer a vast and diverse landscape for visitors. Its natural wealth, water, oil and mineral resources make Angola one of the African countries with the greatest potential. Rwanda, with more than 4 million inhabitants, is the country's capital and administrative and financial center. The city, which was in its day considered the loveliest and most lively on the west coast of Africa, is today beginning to recover the lifestyle which gave it its fame. Luanda was founded in 1575 by the Portuguese captain Paulo Dias Novaes, who disembarked here accompanied by a crew of 700 and established the first center of Portuguese influence. The first city built by Europeans on the west coast of Africa, it soon became an important port, not only for the distribution of products from the interior, but also as a departure point for slaves destined for Brazil or North America. The port of Luanda and its city would attract a wide variety of people and cultures, and this mix would create a truly unique society with its own lifestyle, which can still be seen today. One of the city's most symbolic and recognizable figures is the police officer, ironically named Horacio Ordena. He is the winner of the Portuguese style event in the last three traffic directing contests. His strict and efficient professionalism has made him a perfect example of the order which the city of Luanda seeks to move towards in the future. <laughs> This is Angola. Preventing and extinguishing is our motto. The best food in Angola is fungi. The prettiest thing in Angola is me. The prettiest thing in Angola is in her. The prettiest thing in Angola is the people. We're going to fly over Angola. Balumukan 
From the desert, through the savanna, to the lush tropical rainforests, Angola offers the opportunity to see all of the continent's landscapes without leaving this one country. As its natural beauty is unknown to the eyes of the world, we can speak of Africa's best kept treasure. You only need to travel a short way from the city of Luanda and take in the vista from the viewpoint of the moon to discover this for yourself. One thousand six hundred kilometers of endless beaches are still untouched by tourism. An average temperature of 24 degrees and the infinite caprices of nature make Angola a tourist power eager for investment and visitors. On the 11th of November 1975, after several centuries of struggle against the Portuguese, the first president of Angola, Dr. Agostinho Neto, declared independence. This moment was commemorated in one of his poems. With dry eyes against this irresistible fear of our Africa, which we inherit from massacres and lies, we return to Africa, stars of irresistible brilliance, with the word written in our dry eyes, liberty. At a certain moment, Africa gained independence with presidents from cultural groups. They were writers, playwrights, people who had a cultural influence and close ties to art. But this relationship with the West goes back far earlier. The church of Kulumbimbi, located in the site of the former capital of the Congo, was built by the Dutch in the year 1492. The exchange was always unjust and unequal, riches for the colonists and slavery for the colonized. Soon this desire for riches would come into conflict with the people prepared to fight for their freedom. I believe we are living at a very specific time, emerging from the terrible traumas of the past two centuries, such as slavery, wars of independence, invasions, and wars amongst ourselves. The hasty departure of the Portuguese created an enormous political void, destroying any possibility of a smooth transition to independence. This instability made Angola the final setting for the Cold War, attracting the attention of foreign powers, such as the United States, the Soviet Union, China and Cuba. Foreign intervention lasted more than two decades and led to such complex situations as Cuban troops guarding American oil facilities. The aggressors were Angolan rebels, who were in turn supported by the United States government. The civil war lasted until 2002 and would result in an entire generation of Angolans knowing nothing but war. I'd like to imagine the future of Angola in an extremely peaceful way in a country with few people, an immense territory and many things to be done on every level. It has everything it needs to be a producer. I believe Angola has much room for creation before it. In 1979, Agostinho Neto died. He was succeeded by the engineer José Eduardo dos Santos. Não é uma substituição fácil. 
nem tão pouco me parece uma substituição possível. É apenas uma substituição necessária. A luta continua e a vitória é certa. I think it's necessary, after 26 years of war, that we engage in some serious reflection so that we do not find ourselves in a situation which might lead back to war. Our mission was to go looking for some comrades. We were in four vehicles. Mine was the second. The first passed, and my tank set off an anti-tank mine. The flames and the sand hit me right in the eyes, and I have never seen anything again. No light, nothing. Now I don't know what the sun is like. I feel the heat of the sun, but I can't see it. Now I don't have days or nights, but darkness forever. In the city of Huambo, we find the Bomba Alta Bomb Victim Recovery Center, one of the many in the country. It receives an average of 14 patients a week. We have a shelter, a place for inpatients. They spend between three and four weeks here. That is, if they adapt well, and the specialists think they're ready to leave with a prosthesis. After rehabilitation, all free of charge, they take their prosthesis, they're given a little money, and they return to their place of origin. Then I got frightened and asked the nurses to turn on the light. The nurses told me they couldn't, that the light was already on. Then my spirit came back. Ah, that's right, I stepped on a mine. And I started to cry. José Sayobo is an example. In fact, he showed and continues to show the entire world 
that disabled people are useful. At Bomba Alta, they make all the prosthesis used by the patients in learning to walk. The center's workshops also make the majority of the crutches used in medical centers throughout the country. At that time, people thought that a person without sight, a blind person, had no future before them. Our trainer appeared, and that was the first time he asked me to take part in a sport for the disabled. I looked at him and thought, that man's crazy, a blind man running? when I can't even walk by myself. On the 1st of August, we went to the Greek Paralympic Games in Athens. The day of the competition, not even I thought there would be surprises. There were some great athletes there. But I beat my first record in the 100 meters and won the gold medal. Later in the 200 meters, I won gold again. In the 400 meters, I set a new record. I never thought I'd get to the Olympic Games. And it was the first time that an athlete had beaten four records in a single game. When I climbed the podium to receive the medal, as I heard our national anthem, I remembered the moment when I lost my sight. There, with all those people around me, filling the stadium and shouting, Angola, Angola. The important thing is to forget the war, and I think that war will not come to our country again. From now on, we must only think about studying, working, and sports. The struggle against landmines is a struggle which involves our entire society. All of us are working so that there will be no more mines in Angola. Domingos Justino is one of these people struggling against the blight of landmines on a daily basis. We're in the process of entering a minefield located very close to the town of Santo Antonio. These red stakes separate the safe area from the area which is not safe. This means that nobody can walk there. We have to walk through this corridor which has been cleared. In this minefield we have 21 sappers, of which six are doctors. As we can see, this sapper has found two mines. They're all Angolan. They're recruited from within this province. There's a lot of metal contamination, so we can't use metal detectors. We have to use alternative methods, such as manual excavation. Here's a BP-1 pressure mine, Cuban. They're set off just by putting pressure on them. They can be detonated with only three kilos of pressure. But we found another type of mine here on this side, which explodes with just 300 or 500 grams. Once cleared of mines, the area will be handed over to the local farmers. Here in Santo Antonio, 30 families will benefit from the work of Domingo and his team from Hallow Trust. People exaggerate when they say that Angola is one of the most mined countries in the world or where there are the most mines, that it must have some 10 million. 
For our experience and our work tells us that we have 361 minefields. I can't calculate for all of Angola, but I can say that in five or six years this area will be completely cleared of mines. Now we're going to destroy them. I don't know how much it costs to manufacture a mine, but I do know how difficult it is to find and destroy them. Today, Angola is enjoying a political stability. It has a liberal economy and is committed to social development. The country has good relations with its neighbors and the rest of the world. It is a member of the African Union, the Southern African Development Community, and the common market of Eastern and Southern Africa. As the second biggest petroleum producer in sub-Saharan Africa, the country plays a vital geostrategic role in the oil development in the Gulf of Guinea. For foreign investors, there are a multitude of opportunities in areas such as infrastructure, industry, minerals, agriculture and tourism. Angola's economy is growing at a spectacular rate. United Nations estimates put Angola's growth at 12% for this year one of the highest rates of economic growth in the world. Monetary policy during the past three years has stabilized this nation's currency and reduced the rate of inflation by more than 300%. A clear example of this environment ripe for investment is Coca-Cola. The American multinational has invested more than $60 million in Angola. The Chinese company Guangdong Overseas Construction has invested almost $10 million. The German multinational Volkswagen has announced a future investment of $48 million. Angola has eight ports. The most important are Luanda, Lobito and Namibi. Its principal exports are oil, diamonds, fish, wood and coffee. Bengala railroads plan to connect the port of Lobita on the Atlantic coast with the rail system of neighboring Zambia. With domestic and international support, $11,000 million will be invested in this project. At present, 15% of Angolans have access to electricity. Hydroelectric facilities generate two-thirds of the country's electrical capacity. Kapanda Dam in the province of Melange promises to double that capacity. With its powerful rivers, Angola is betting on a future in hydroelectric power. Angolan public television and the national radio dominate the country's airwaves. The public television operates two networks during most of the day. The radio broadcasts its programs via six local, 18 provincial and seven regional stations. In addition to Portuguese, it offers programs in many of the country's other tongues. Angola's enormous agricultural potential is still largely untapped. The United Nations estimate that the country has between 5 and 8 million hectares of land, ideal for agriculture and ranching. The country's varied climatic zones make it possible to grow many different crops, such as tubers, grains, tropical and citrus fruits, cotton and vegetables. This tradition of farming is making a recovery and has been defined as a national priority. In the interior, in the province of Huila, live the Mumuila, one of the many traditional tribes still inhabiting the country. They make their living from cattle farming, fed by the region's rich pasture land. But today the Mumuila are concerned. The rainy season is late in coming and the cattle are suffering. Kalenga is a soba, or village chief. As if he were a lion, each day he waits in the shade of a tree for his eight wives to serve him food. 
They are the ones who manage the land, its resources, and each of their homes. The Soba will dry each of the dishes, and the one he likes best, the plate he leaves emptiest, will determine which of his wives he will spend the night with. In Mumuile tradition, food is a very serious matter. The time has come to sacrifice one of the oxen. In this way, in addition to feeding the rest of the village, the Soba can communicate with his ancestors, so they can intercede regarding the rain. Like the old lion he is, he leaps upon the neck of his prey. Without needing to spill even a single drop of blood, he puts pressure on the ox's jugular with his knee. The animal will shortly be dead. <laughs> the Sopa has already been guaranteed of descendants. But it will not be his son who will become the next village chief, but his nephew. Among the Mumuila, bloodlines are transmitted to the woman, thus ensuring their authenticity. So, the next chief will be the son of the current Soba's sister. Pra quem vem de fora, isso é novidade. Pra quem vem à toa, assim é a cidade. Vai ao ponto final, arrasta te até a mutamba. E se até for carnaval, fica bailando em Luanda. Conheço uma catorzinha, pois até ao Mussulu. E vai até na ilha, aprende a dar o futuro. E se a cama te esprega, é tarraxinha. Se ela mexe a cintura, é andorinha. Se levanta. Da perninha é produto. Se escorrega, escorrega na pista. É gato preto. E se remexe o torugo. É seu futuro. Next to the port of Luanda crowds the Boa Vista district. 13,000 families struggle to make ends meet in the shanty town. Boa Vista is the result of what took place in the Republic of Angola over some period of time. The population's exodus to Luanda brought about the Boa Vista area. From the population information we work with, we see that families are large and houses very small for the number of family members living there. Every year, during the rainy season, which is right now, in their present condition, the houses are in quite a bit of danger. The terrible living conditions in Boa Vista led the government to take an interest and create a better living space. A space which has been properly developed, organized, with all the necessary facilities. With running water and water treatment, with electric light, with schools, with streets, with hospitals, with recreation and shopping areas. Today, more than 21,000 people live in Zangu, and now a polytechnical school is being built. There are primary and secondary schools. The housing built in Zanka was constructed with seven-person families in mind. The houses are 52 square meters, with three bedrooms, one for the parents, one for the male children, and another for the girls. These areas also need another type of social work. The members of the AIDS Prevention Project work the streets of Rocha Pinto, trying to inform young people about the dangers of this disease. One thing that happened was that the war contributed to closing the borders 
and reducing the entry of people, of tourists, of immigrants into our country. What this meant is that the virus spread more slowly in comparison with other countries. We carry out small activities among the community, debates with the young people, activities with the parents. Young people go out to meet other young people, to speak in less technical language about these problems, young person to young person. We distribute pamphlets, condoms, and medicines. Our health service is free, as people make a very small contribution, virtually a token amount. We're trying to do everything, and a little more, to save our youth. I think we will. I think we'll succeed in stabilizing the aid situation in Angola. This maternity hospital in the province of Melange has brought about a profound change in the attitude of the region's people. In Africa, this is how it is. Women prefer to give birth at home. Since 2003, when the new maternity hospital was inaugurated, the situation has been reversed. Women now agree to come to the maternity hospital. Previously, we had some four or five births a day. But now the number is somewhere between eight and twelve births. The hospital now has running water. It has clothing for the women, sufficient food, clothes for the babies. It has all the conditions necessary for a modern maternity hospital. Before we had low numbers for women giving birth and high numbers for mother and child deaths. But it's no longer like that. Last year we had 1,067 births. And as of only September of this year, we've had 1,743. Another of the projects we have undertaken is the eradication of poliomyelitis. We would like to eradicate it by the end of 2005. The latest campaign shows that we have coverage somewhere between 90 and 98 percent. This reassures us that it's possible to eradicate polio in our province and in our country this very year. But in fact, the illness which worries us most is malaria. We would like our country to one day have the technical capabilities to produce a malaria vaccine. I think that the research done in this area over the next 10 years will make it possible to have a vaccine. Angola is in good hands at the moment. The level of medical attention available before is not what it is now. Angola is improving. It's on the right path. The province of Cabinda is located in the northernmost part of Angola. It is one of the richest regions for oil and wood in Africa. Here, at the Kikongo Nature Preserve, begins a vast and impenetrable jungle of Mayombe, 
one of the last refuges of animal species, such as gorillas and elephants. Among its wide variety of trees, some up to 50 meters high, winds one of the largest mangrove swamps on the planet, a true paradise for birds. This country offers infinite possibilities, from traveling the waters of these mangrove swamps, known as the African Amazon, to negotiating a massive sea of dunes in one of the most arid deserts in the world, the Namib. The province of Namibi is the largest fishing area in the country. It is named after the desert which occupies most of its area, known worldwide as the planet's only habitat for a strange flower, the Berbicia mirabilis. The 15,000 square kilometers of the Iona Nature Reserve shelter this whimsical plant. The virtually unknown Kalandula Falls, the largest in Africa after Victoria, are located in Milan. This 105 meter high wonder interrupts the course of the Kwanza River, the most important in Angola. Another must-see within the province of Melange is Pedras Negras, a mysterious and beautiful rock formation which thrusts itself up in the middle of this plain. This is a unique opportunity to see the loveliest landscapes in all Africa. Back in the province of Huila, we travel along a curious road which runs through the Labour Mountains. As night falls, Luanda becomes a leisure area par excellence. Every night of the week is perfect for losing oneself amongst its restaurants, discos or in the innumerable clubs along the beach in the area that is known as La Isla. This year, the city of Luanda Hill will host the first triennial of contemporary art. The TAC, or Contemporary African Art and Culture Territories, is a foundation which seeks not only to create a cultural movement, but also to reflect upon all the permutations of Angolan modern history. The triennial will last three months. It will begin in November, December 2005 with the Imagetica Festival, cinema, documentaries, photography and also African television, which is going to offer historic moments from its past. Between 100 and 150 artists will be represented, with a total of 300 international guests. During the triennial, we also want to absorb readings from new generations of Europeans, Americans and Asians from all over the world of this country's existential process. Capoeira is known internationally as a Brazilian cultural tradition, but its roots are fundamentally Angolan. African slaves were taken to Brazil, and today the tradition has returned to its roots. The historian K. Kierbunesque Fukiao describes how the word capoeira has its origins in a native Angolan language, Kikongo. 
In the Kakongo language, Kipura or Kipula means fly from one place to another, fight. The two terms are used to describe the movement of a cock during a fight. Kupura specifically within the context of the Congo culture is used for an individual who uses fighting techniques. The Kilindukilo Ballet has been a leader in national and international dance for more than 20 years. The winner of many prizes in Africa and Europe, the group is recognized in countries such as Germany, Russia, Japan, Portugal, India and Cuba. The ballet is made up of more than 100 Angolans from every corner of the country and has two branches, one in Luanda and another in Lisbon. Angola is rich. Of this there can be no doubt. But where does this wealth come from? from the water. Ranching, farming, fishing, energy, health, everything depends on water and Angola has some of the most enviable water resources on the planet. Under the water there always lies wealth. In diamond mining the first step is to divert a river to a parallel course. The remaining sediment is collected and undergoes a preliminary sifting according to the size and density of the material. We are in the province of Lunde Norte, in the mines belonging to SDM, a company financed by a government and private capital. More than 300 employers work in this 3,000 kilometer operation. The final stage, the detailed work, must be done by hand and under strict security measures. Each of these trays is checked by six different people and under no circumstances do the workers ever have direct contact with the diamonds. The mine's average production is 35,000 carats of raw diamonds per month. The current price per carat is around $200. What we are seeing are the diamonds found in just one week. Oil is Angola's black gold and dominates its economy. The country is the second largest producer in sub-Saharan Africa producing close to a million barrels a day. It is estimated that Angola has 5.4 thousand million barrels in reserve and that within three years production will double to two million barrels a day. Sonangol, the national oil company, works together with multinational corporations. With new discoveries they are betting heavily on Angola's future. Chevron Texaco, for example, intends to invest $11,000 million in upcoming years. Today, Angola has a refinery in Luanda with a processing capacity of 29,000 barrels a day. The country will be building another refinery with a production capacity of 200,000 barrels a day in the coastal city of Lubito.
Rocha Pinto is one of the largest shanty towns in Luanda. More than a million and a half people live there. Within the general distribution of Angola's population, the majority, more than 50 percent, are under 18 years of age. We are working to improve the situation. As a result of the war, in various regions, families moved from rural areas to urban environments. Entire armies of children were created, known as street children. To deal with this situation, the government has already implemented measures to reunite these children with their families in their provinces of origin. Measures such as a nationwide television program, which can be used by people far from their original village to communicate with their families. The National Children's Institute has also announced that more than 1,800 children without families have been taken off the streets. Uh, a nossa aula, vamos falar da comuna. No município de Cabinda, vamos encontrar as comunas de... In some areas of Angola, such as this town in the north of Cabinda, schooling is a real novelty. It's true that during the colonial period, there were no schools. Those schools that did exist were for those who were similar, those the colonists considered most important. Right now we have serious problems. We find the littlest ones studying with the older children, because the older ones couldn't study. There's great need to study. The schools have been invaded by children, especially this year. This is due to the fact that the government decided to offer children a school lunch to motivate them to go to school. There are even children who aren't school age who come to school. They insist to their mothers and fathers, I want to go to school. For Mumuila children, school is an everyday experience. Their free time is very similar to that of any other city child. They play with their dolls and imitate their elders in taking care of the family. The play is practice and a learning process for the work that they will soon have to do. Their mothers also take advantage of moments of leisure. The village center has been turned into an improvised beauty salon. <laughs> A carefully prepared oil known as melula is spread all over their bodies. It protects their skin from the sun and keeps away bad spirits. <laughs> With the children occupied and the women trying to make the most of their femininity, the men get together to deal with their business. Today, armed conflicts between neighboring tribes are growing scarcer and scarcer. But the warriors cannot be unprepared. This is an ancient warrior's dance that serves as both training and a reminder of long ago heroic deeds.
tirei o sapato, peguei no saco de fuba. Peguei a enxada, cavei um grande buraco. Plantei a semente, reguei com água da chuva. E a dor no meu peito, meti dentro do saco. Peguei nas malandas e viajei pra Luanda. E vi o meu povo esperar com esperança. Sorriso marcado no rosto de um candengue. Se alguém perguntar, essa é a minha gente. Mas que angola é essa? Essa é a nossa terra. Que angola é essa? Essa é a nossa terra. Que angola é essa? Essa é a nossa terra. Que angola é essa? Essa é a nossa terra. Pra quem vem de fora, isso é novidade. Pra quem vem à toa, assim é a cidade. Vai ao ponto final, arrasta-te até a mutamba E se até for carnaval, fica a bailar em Luanda Conheço uma catorzinha, pois até ao Mussolu E banha até na ilha, aprende a dar o puduro E se a dama te esprega, hum. é carraxinha Se ela mexe a cintura, é andorinha Se levanta a perninha, é brututo Se escorrega, escorrega na pista, é gato preto e se remexe o torugu, esse é o futuro. Olha, vai lá, vai lá, vai lá, vai lá, não para, me abre, me fecha, vai lá, semba, vai. Angola dança, Angola é bonita, vai meu povo, remexe, aproveita. Terra é bonita. 